You speed on the rugby field, grab the attention of a teacher who reckoned, no, no, this young man should be on a track. A year later, he finished third at the Junior National Track and Field Championships and since then has not looked back. As you know, track is a part of my life and it's what I love doing. So being stuck at home was a bit difficult because I wasn't used to just being stuck at home the whole time. So it was a bit difficult missing the track sometimes, you know, but it was nice to have some downtime, you know, to get the head refocused again, preparing for next year, prepare on the mental side, not just on the track. Mm -hmm. And I've been spending lockdown alone at my place in Mendo Park, so <laughs> no, I think... <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 guy, it, it just, it, it must be insane for any athlete who's competing year in, year out to now be told, not only are you not allowed anywhere near the track, but, but, but this thing is keeping you away from your livelihood. You know, like, it's, like I said, it's difficult. Like, as you know, we as athletes get paid for competing, you know, we get paid for running. And now that we're stuck at home, it's more like, oh, geez, not going to have income for the we don't even know how long because it didn't make, it didn't specific, there's no specifics of when it's going to end or when they're going to find the cure. So it's more of like, we don't know how long this is going to go for. We're just hoping for like the shortest time period that's going to happen so we can get back our lives back to track, you know, get back to normal, making cash for ourselves as well. So it was a bit difficult, you know. Well, let's go back to when it was a little bit easier, the early days. And, and like I said in the intro now, you could easily have gone the rugby route, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Why didn't you? And and any regrets, given that we are now world champions? Uh, no regrets, no regrets at all. You know, like, I, I tell people the story. I think they, they don't believe. They seem like, they don't seem to believe. But <laughs> I was like grade eight by then. So when I was a grade eight, I, I had a dream once that when I'm, in, when I'm in matric one day, wouldn't it be cool? Because it was London 2012 that time. Mm. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you went to Olympics while in school? And come back, and when you come back, everyone's like, "Oh, that's that kid that went to Olympics." <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. I've told so many people the story, and like, it actually happened when I was in school. I went mm. to Olympics, mm. and, and it happened the exact way I dreamt about it. So for me, it's not. I am not disappointed at all that I didn't go the rugby route. I'm actually more more like, what I dreamt of, I it happened. Like it became a reality. So for me, it's more like, there's still more things I can still achieve. You know, so you just have to believe in it. Now, mate. <sighs> That 1969 that you ran in Pretoria a couple of years ago, I, I happened to be trackside, and a lot of people felt you could even you could you, you could have gone even faster on that day, across 200 meters. That, that set you up as the man to beat, not only in South Africa, but but as one of the best in the world over 200 meters. You, you've broken other records as well. Talk to us about the records that Clarence Munyai has broken, and and just what really stands out for him. No, the records that I've broken is one of my records which I like a lot, like one of my favorite ones is the 20.10 one as a junior because it was run by Rian Dempis. That record has been there for 16 years. Mm. Like it's been there for 16 years. And for me to just break it was more like it was like a stepping stone to be like, you broke a record that's been there for 16 years. So it just showed me like what could be achieved and what's possible. Because that record made me ranked fourth fastest all time junior behind Noah Lyles and Usain Bolt and Ramil Gudev. So it was that thing of the people that ran like, quicker than me are these guys that are doing really, really well. Like you say, both ran world records. So that's one of my standout records that I, I like a lot. Mm. But the 1969 record, like, <laughs> that's my top one. Grew up a winner. I never lose, only learn a lesson. I'm a mutant master splinter. Past the finish. Now my goal infinity. Victorious. Mine in the future. My crew won the glory. That put that set me up like it made me the tenth fastest athlete of all time, you know, as a senior. Because as you say, some people are like, ah, juniors sometimes mm. don't. Mm. They, don't oh, they are. They have been fast juniors. So for me, that was like, I wasn't just a fast junior. I'm also like a fast senior, you know. Like I worked really hard for that record. Like I had dream goals that I want to try break the junior record and afterwards get the senior record as well and hold those two records like simultaneously, which I really wanted to do, which I did, which I'm mm. really proud mm. of. And that record has been held by athletes like Anasa Jobodwana, which, you know, it's like the athletes that held it before, I looked up to, you know, so that's why it's one of my favorite records. 
tell me, as, as an athlete, because you compete across 100 as well, what makes you physically, so people have an understanding at home, better across 200 as opposed to the 100? My, my 200 meter curve is just really quick, quicker than my 100 start. So the 100 is more technical, like you have to go like straight. It's like, it's more technical. The 200 is more like my strong part of the race, the curve. Mm. So I've perfected the curve so so much. Like I've worked so like over the years, trying to perfect it. And I got to the point where I've perfected it, which makes my curve a bit quicker than the others, which is why my 200 is really good. Because 100 meters, whew, it's, a, it's, another <laughs> game. it's a different ball game, but that's why my 200 meters is a bit better than 100. And that's what, that's what your focus is going to be moving forward as well, I take it, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm still going to try to come back to 100 a bit. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, All right. Get that up for advice. Now, now let, let's talk Rio and what happened there. And obviously, the last time you were able to put yourself against the best in the world would have been Doha. Uh, talk to us about that, that progression across that Olympic cycle as, as we head into what hopefully will be the Olympics in, 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 uh, in Tokyo in 2021. Um, you know, 2016 was, I was still a junior by then, so that, that Olympics was more experience trying to figure out how to mingle with the big boys, because it was difficult, like, it was really scary. I remember I stepping on the track, I could, I could hardly breathe, like, the nerves would get into me, because, it's a, like, I was starstruck, like, oh, I'm running mm. against, like, Adam Jamili, Usain Bolt, these guys <laughs> again. So, it was, I was starstruck by then, so it was, it was a nice experience, you know, to see how the Olympic Games actually works. So, preparing up till this Olympic Games now, which was supposed to be this year, I had already got that experience which I needed, like running senior races, co international competitions, like the World Champs and Olympic Games. So last year was, I'll say a decent year, like I was injured for most of the year, but I ended off the year with the season's best of 20 to 04, which I was quite happy because I was like, if I can end the season like that while being injured, going into the Olympic year, which means we can actually improve on that and do really well at the Olympics. So now, like I said, the lockdown is a blessing because now I have more time to prepare. Mm. Mm. another further six seven months for tokyo 2021 if it does happen next year have you been in touch with your your management have you been in touch with other athletes in in terms of where's the discussion at around when our best athletes are going to get back on the track competitively again from year on in yeah because they um i do speak to my agent he did tell me that our, our races which are planned for august if the borders of the other countries are open and we are allowed to travel by then but of course, as an athlete, we need to prepare like at mm. least two months of proper training before we can start compete because before we can start being competitive. So I'll be looking around about September, October, mm -hmm. at least races in then, and then next year February, the South African season starts. Then we can start running properly, as in preparing for the Olympic Games. So, so if that doesn't happen by the end of this year, because so many things can still happen let's say we, we get to nationals in 2021, it can actually happen, it can, it can go. Is there enough time for Clarence Mounier to get himself into the best condition possibly to, to go and win a medal at, at uh, the Tokyo Games? You know, like, how I see it is all that is on the same boat. We're all in the same boat. It's going to be about the athletes which can adapt the best, otherwise they're going to get the medal mm. next. So if I can adapt the best to what I have now, it's like, for example... Like now we can go jogging outside, for example. If I use that properly and adapt to what we have and use what we have now at this moment, then when the time comes next year for Olympic Games, I should be ready because all the athletes are on the same boat. It's not like other athletes in South Africa are training properly on the track as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I prepare well at this time and use the opportunity well and not just sit at home and just say like, yeah, I'll do it next week or whatever, then I feel like, I will be in the best shape I can possibly be. There, there, are, there are some people who feel that whenever this next Olympic Games is going to happen, as, as lovers of track and field, we must prepare ourselves for athletes perhaps not running the fastest times in the next Olympic Games. Do you agree with that? No, I, I, don't, I, don't, agree. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that because, like I said, some athletes... Athletes are different. Some athletes take one race to be fast. Other athletes take eight races to be fast. So it just depends what type of athlete you are and how your coach prepares. Because I know every athlete has a plan. Mm. So And I'm sure all, all coaches can, can make the athletes perform at a specific time. So uh, next year's Olympic Games. So I'm 100% sure all coaches are going to want their athletes to perform really well at Olympic Games. So we will see fast times at Olympic Games. In your, head, 
in in your head, what do you think Clarence Munyai can go and do at the at, at that Olympics next year? What I've learned over the years, it's not about time. It's about medals. It's about placing. So if I can run my heats well, semifinals well, and the final come top three, that's what that's what matters. Because at the end of the day, it's who can run the fastest three races in a row. How are you staying in touch with your family? How are you staying in touch with friends over this period? Oh, like my family, we, we call each other all the time. Like Skype call each other all the time. We FaceTime, group FaceTime each other almost every day to catch up and see how everyone is doing, if everyone is surviving. Because, of course, we miss our families. But at, until after the lockdown, we have to wait until then for us to be able to see our families. But my friends, we play online PlayStation every, every day. <laughs> who, who are you playing against the most and what are you guys playing? <laughs> I play with uh, Tenolo Lamar. He's a world youth champion. He won 20, I don't know. 18? Yeah. On the youth. Uh, we play every night Call of Duty. We're the same team, so we do get some wins together online. So he's a person I play with a lot online. By the way, where's your other track bay? Gift Leo Tlela. How's he doing? <laughs> he's, he's doing really well. Like this year was his comeback year and he, he ran really well this year. Like I was really happy to see him back on the track and doing really well. So I'm looking forward to see how he's doing, how he's going to do next year, because I know he's going to do really great stuff. It's good to have him back, you know, because we've been running together since 2015. Mm. We went to Olympics together when we were still juniors. So it's really nice to have him back on the track again. Um, in this time, and, and I've been sharing with other athletes as well, that, that we don't know what's going to happen financially from this month until the end of the, the year. As an athlete, are you good? Are you okay? You, all your needs are taken care of. The sponsors are paying up. Yeah. You can live your life and trade. Yeah. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Ah, yeah, I can live my life and trade because I was fortunate enough to have really good people guiding me and advising me what to do with all my cash and stuff. So for me, it's more like all my cash is already all saved up and stuff. So for me, it's more like I'm settled for them for now and I can still be even for the next two years if nothing's going to happen. So for me, I was fortunate enough to have people. Look at you. Look at you. (laughs) So I'm really fortunate enough to and thankful that I had people looking after me. All right, my brother, let's wrap this thing up now and and just you look into that camera, tell South Africans what you would like to do on, on your own behalf, but also on behalf of an entire nation when that Olympics eventually comes around? Uh, on my behalf, I would really, really love to, I would like to make, make myself proud. And on behalf of the country, I'd like to make the country proud and inspire the nation and inspire the youth that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And I'm, pr- and I'm glad to be South African. My brother, put it right there, put it right there. Clarence Punyai, we wish you the best of luck. It's good to hear that uh, you're young, responsible, and looking forward to the best that is yet to come on the track. Uh, thank you for the call. I really appreciate it. Shout my brother.